Hello everybody and welcome back to The Ultimate Fashion History with me, Amanda Halley, and a long overdue episode of What We're Into. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what What We're Into is, I describe it as The Ultimate Fashion History video magazine. Basically, a fun and frothy potpourri of everything that's inspiring me, enchanting me, or delighting me at any given moment that I want to share with you in the hopes that it might inspire you as well. Before we start, just to remind you that I don't do comments here, but I'll leave a link um, with all of the details of how to contact me, a link to everything discussed in this episode. And if you want to chat about all of this stuff, join the Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group. We're always into something over there. So pour yourself a lovely cold drink or a nice cup of tea, lick your thumb, turn over the cover page and let's dive in to what we're into and let's start with some fash alessandro michele for gucci gave me big top vibes with his bold stripes and me party and color block vision for resort 23 that blended elegance with fun and just look at this dress with its humbug op art swirls this really is all the fun of the fair Christopher John Rogers, probably one of my favourite designers du jour, kept the fun rolling with a rainbow of stripes and slinky op art. And look at his tailoring here. Christopher John Rogers is one of the very few designers today who, in my opinion, actually understands a woman's body and designs clothing to fit and flatter every shape with slouchy silks and softly draping bias cuts. For my boys out there, I adored Véronique Nechanien for Hermès menswear. This is spring 23 and it really looks like spring. She said of the collection that she wanted it to be, quote, all about holiday, not the city. It's about lightness and having fun. Pops of colour and the natural world, end quote. I couldn't have said it better myself. Look at that gorgeous mix of saturated pastels with black and neutral. But this is really pricey stuff, right? But guess what? I've got good news because yes, we can get that look for less. This was one of my fave looks from the collection, but check this out. I found this lovely lightweight lilac wax jacket on, I think, ASOS for about 60 bucks and the bucket hat I found for 20 And take a look at this neutral golf jacket here. This is from The Gap for only $50. So you could wear your regular black jeans, layer up the lilac jacket with the neutral, throw on the matching bucket hat, and you've got the look for less. But wait, what about those way out lilac sandals on the Hermes model? Well, I found these on Echo on sale for about $80, but I bet you'd get something similar for even less if you dig around on Amazon. And so there we have it, the look for less, saving you money with the UFH. I'm here to help. What else are we into? Let's look at some art and celebrate both light and shade. For the shade, these delightful illustrations by artist Vincent Ball. They popped up on one of my news feeds and aren't they delightful? Vincent takes the shadows cast by everyday objects and turns them into these wonderful ephemeral animals and characters like this lovely owl or this rather groovy man. Imagine how quick to imagination Vincent must be and from shade to light. And these probably appeared on your news feed too. These absolutely exquisite architectural sketches by Nikita Buziak. And I'm not sure how he creates that inviting light if these sketches are digitally enhanced or if he uses a light box or what. But by use of light, Nikita has created a magical world of buildings that we can then populate with the people drawn from our own imaginations. And the people in my imagination are always very glamorous and sticking with glamour. Have you heard of this train? It's called Rovos Rail and it bills itself as the most luxurious train in the world. 
It's based in South Africa and runs these deluxe train vacations throughout South Africa and neighboring nations, Mozambique, Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, taking in all of the sights, all of the animals, all of the culture. Is this not gorgeous? It comes with a very exacting dress code, and Rupert and I always like a dress code so not to look perpetually overdressed. And observe the sumptuous fittings and furniture, and imagine those views. This is incredible. This is one of the cabins. Imagine waking up in the morning and looking out and seeing the wonder of Southern Africa and its wildlife zooming past you. This is high luxury with a rather high price tag to match, but we can dream, can't we? Although one of my own travel dreams is coming true in just a couple of days. We are heading to Mackinac Island to stay at the Grand Hotel for a couple of days. This is Rupert's birthday treat that I am lucky enough to gag in on, and I am so excited. This is the hotel where the movie Somewhere in Time was filmed, and where Esther Williams filmed This Time for Keeps in 1947 and swam in the pool there, which is now called the Esther Williams Pool. I am beside myself with excitement, not least of all because I am so crazy about Carlton Varney interiors. This wonderful, crazy, colourful world of Carlton Varney. I am beside myself with excitement. So of course I will do a walkthrough of the hotel for you. And as I say, this is Rupert's birthday treat. He doesn't want you to know how old he is, but he told me it was okay to tell you that his age corresponds to the number that features in the name of a famous disco nightclub in the 70s, which brings me to what I'm listening to this month. Melba Moore, yep, I'm on another disco kick. And I've concluded that not only is Melba Moore the greatest singer of all time, but This Is It is quite possibly the most perfect pop song ever written. What else are we into? I am obsessed with this restaurant. My friend Patrick alerted me to its existence. It's in Miami and it's called Sexy Fish. And I love everything about Sexy Fish. Look at the interior of Sexy Fish. Look at all those sexy fish dangling from those high ceilings. Those salmon pink booths. It's like a nightclub in an RKO movie from the 1930s. Sexy Fish Miami is an offshoot of the original Sexy Fish in London and I am enjoying saying Sexy Fish way too much. And check out that giant octopus. And the food at Sexy Fish looks as spectacular as the decor. This is so gorgeous, show-stopping stuff. Look at the glassware. What's this? What's going on? I have no idea. I think it's a dessert. Anyway, if everything goes according to plan, we will be going to Sexy Fish in March as an exciting stop on our retro Floridian road trip. And yes, Anthony, I made a logo for a vacation again. So yes, the dream is for our fifth wedding anniversary to take the retro road trip of my dreams. In a rented convertible, we'll start in St. Augustine, then drive down the Atlantic coast all the way to Key West, and then up the Gulf Coast, staying at retro motels or historic hotels, and seeking out what's left of the golden age of Floridian vacations, a pre-Disney World Florida that has always enchanted me. Not that there's anything wrong with Disney World, in fact, We're taking the kids there next month for a long overdue vacation, overdue because we were supposed to go last year but had to cancel because of COVID. So this trip is going to be epic because it's also a big family reunion with my siblings and my nephews and their wives. All three of my siblings will be there, including my brother, Zach, the L Jude brother. You know I'm always talking about him. I'm obsessed with my brother, Zach, and I'm so excited. We'll be staying at the Animal Kingdom Lodge, which looks amazing, and I've heard it has a really good buffet. I might do a walkthrough of that too. What else are we into? 
Never mind being obsessed with Zach, I am obsessed with the Masoni Mahjong couch system. Now, the Mahjong eating system has been around for 50 years or so, but I've only just happened upon the Masoni version. And I love it above all things. Is it not gorge? And it's when you see it in an actual room with all of those colours and wild yet harmoniously mixed prints does it really shine through. It is so beautiful. Sadly, I do not have enough money, or enough friends to be honest, to make the Masoni Mahjong seating system work for me, but perhaps it might work for you. And let me ask you this. Is this working for you? It's been the talk of social media for a few weeks now, and it's a love it or hate it kind of thing. But what do you think of the jellyfish haircut? It's basically cropped on the top of the head with layered tendrils, and it can be worked in different ways depending on personal style. It can look sumptuous and sophist, or chunky and punky. And look at this, what a sleek and elegant haircut. Anyway, the jellyfish has been quite the topic of debate on the Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group. Me? I like it because I like to see young folk having fun with their hair again. We've had almost two decades of that elbow length wavy Kardashian hair and I'm over it. Not for myself obviously, but as with all things there is often a disconnect between what I think and what I do, however, I love the jellyfish. I think when it comes to hair, fashion is taking some risks again and sticking with hair. I am crazy about this packaging for Good Hair Day Pasta. It's so simple, but so clever. And again, so much fun. Are you noticing how often we're coming back to the concept of fun in this episode of what we're into? Is the world becoming fun again? I hope so. Tell you what else I'm into. The current exhibition at the Victoria and Albert in London, England, Africa Fashion. I can't get to it, alas, but if you're living in or visiting the UK, I think this would be well worth a visit. It's a celebration of fashion from Africa, every nation in Africa, but not indigenous or traditional clothing, I understand, but fashion with a capital F, celebrating the continent's fashion industry, designers and trends and fashion icons of the past 50 years or so. And it's not just garments on display. It seems there is a ton of really inspiring vintage photos too. And I predict that because of this exhibition, we might be seeing its impact and inspiration on upcoming runways. Tell you another exhibition that I don't think I can get to, but which I am currently obsessed with, Chroma, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. I love the Met and I love that they took it upon themselves to do Chroma. Basically, it discusses what sculpture from the ancient world, Sumeria and Greece and Rome, looked like in its day by copying famous statues and putting the colour back on them. Wow. Just wow. This exhibition looks amazing. Not only does it put the colour back, and they used big, big science to determine what the original colours were, but it brings this stuff to life. Look at these busts here. They are so strange and different to what we're used to seeing, aren't they? But so fabulous. Check out this sculpture of an archer. He looks like he's wearing Missoni, doesn't he? And look at her. She's ready for the 4th of July. And all of this has a very strange, highly saturated quality. There was no gloss paint then, so everything has this sort of very odd, unglazed, saturated, matted look to it. And again, by way of big science and technology and lasers and radars and all of this, the exhibition puts the clothing detail back into these sculptures, which, from our point of view as fashion history fans, is a wondrous thing. And I can't help but wonder how Regency fashion might have looked had the folk back then known that the denizens of the classical world weren't wearing pure white and ivory. It may have looked a bit like the costumes in Bridgerton. 
Anyway, I love that the Met did this because as well as being incredibly interesting from a scholastic point of view, it is also delightfully, what, fun. Well, we, and that's both Rupert and myself, guilty as charged, this is a real folie a deux, have become utterly obsessed with Penhaligon's fragrances. Not only are they so indescribably divine to smell, but the Penhaligon's website is so much fun, as is their packaging. Again, we're seeing the world embrace its playful side, even a Victorian-era fragrance company is having a heck of a lot of fun right now. I am so into Mattel's latest Barbie dolls. The amazing Madam C.J. Walker, America's first self-made millionaire. And I love those Lego mutton sleeves and how she's holding a tub of her famous wonderful hair grower treatment. And just a few hours ago, Mattel debuted their Gloria Estefan Barbie, coinciding with the singer's 65th birthday on your feet and sticking with Mattel. The ultimate fashion history skews a little older, which I love and which is understandable considering that I am a little bit older. And I am betting there is a lot of you out there who remember Hot Wheels. We either played with Hot Wheels or had a sibling who did. I did. El Jude brother, Amanda, stop talking about your brother. It's starting to sound unwholesome. I'm just excited because I'm going to see him. Anyway, I love Sean Wotherspoon's Hot Wheels collection for Adidas. Take a look at this. Look at this fabulous 70s retro top in orange and turquoise. And look at the back. I love this stuff. But of course, it's the cool kicks that make this collection shine. These fun and fruity sneaks in retro candy colors. Aren't they pretty? Again, it's all about fun. And look at all of that wonderful detail. And I absolutely love how that wonderful expressive sun that you see in the collection is actually made up of the Hot Wheels logo. So clever. I love this. So much fun. Something else that's fun that I am bananas about is Harry Winston's candy collection. Sapphires and emeralds and aquamarines and white and yellow diamonds. These are extraordinary Willy Wonka wonders that are just little tiny bundles of pure joy. Expensive pure joy. Look at this watch. From Penhaligon's to Harry Winston, these incredibly traditional luxury brands are really exuding this playful side, freeing themselves of any stuffy or snobby associations. Still, this is a bit rich for my blood, sadly, and so is this. Can you even guess what this is? I couldn't until I read about it. It's a bathtub. It's called the Bath Sphere, and I am so into it. It just dangles there as you spin around in it. I have no idea how it drains, nor how you'd get in or out of it. Probably not with a great deal of grace, at least I wouldn't. But I think it is beautiful and reminds us that not everything has to always be in its traditional shape. What's up next? I swear I am not shilling, I am sharing when I tell you about a new batch of 12 republished books from Dean Street Press that you, you of all people, might love. They're by Susan Scarlett, the pen name of author Noel Stretfield. You might know her classic children's book, Ballet Shoes. Anyway, in the late 1930s and 40s, she wrote some wonderful books under the name Susan Scarlett. And this is why I think you might enjoy them. They are set in the world of fashion or the beauty industry or related industries. The heroines looking for love as they work at department stores, as mannequins or models or in ateliers or on cosmetic counters. And so these novels are a delightful insight into these worlds in the 1930s and 40s. I'll leave a link and this is what I've been watching. Yes, last year we loved season one of Only Murders in the Building, but this summer season two was even better in our opinion. And wasn't it great to see Shirley MacLaine? 
I'm also enjoying Titans, The Rise of Hollywood on Curiosity Stream. It tells the story of the very beginning of the American movie industry, going back to the days of the Nickelodeon and tracing it through to the birth of the studio system. It has great reenactments, and if you're a fan of movie history, as I am, as you know, this is well worth the watch. And sticking with the movies, I am so into Gucci's new ad campaign, which is inspired by the film's as you can see, of Stanley Kubrick. I think this is tremendous fun. Everything's represented here. You even get Barry Lyndon. Oh, and I am dying to share the latest poster from Film Freak Designs. You know how much I love Daniello's work and his utterly unique rendering of movie costumes. And this time, he has knocked it even further out of the park with his tribute to Edith Head's elegant costumes for Rear Window. Danny sent me the poster as a prezi and it is indescribably beautiful. And thank you again, Danny. I'll leave a link. I'm so into these pictures of Jupiter that NASA just dropped. They're the clearest pictures ever taken of the super planet. It's a big one. And it is gorgeous, isn't it? And it turns out to be so much more blue and green and aqua than we thought it was before. If Jupiter keeps this up, it might be stealing Saturn's crown as my favourite personal prettiest planet. Up your game, Saturn. There's a new kid on the block. Food of the month? Dolce & Gabbana's Pasta alla Norma, a tomato and aubergine flavoured frenzy. I'll admit I haven't made this yet, but the recipe popped up when I was surfing the net the other day, and I am going to try it. I'll leave a link. Cocktail of the month? Tahitian coffee. I do the mocktail version as I'm on a bit of a healthier living kick at the moment, and... I am kicking the boozical instruments until Christmas, but with a Tahitian coffee mocktail, who needs the hard stuff? And the style icon of the month? Raquel Welsh. The beautiful Raquel is a September baby, and I have always loved her signature style. This smart cookie with her big auburn mane and California tan. I adore her. These paparazzi pictures just dropped of Raquel at 82. She is 82 years old this month. Look at her. She is still the epitome of glamour and wonderfulness. And shall I tell you who else is the epitome of wonderfulness? The Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group admins, Kendall, head admin, Danelle, who has managed to keep up with the group admin while moving across the country, Norm, Tom, I don't thank you remotely as often as I should for all that you do, and how the UFH just wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for you guys. It wouldn't even be if it wasn't for you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that episode of What We're Into as much as I enjoyed making it. You can contact me through my website, I'll leave a link below, as well as a link to everything we've discussed in this episode. If you'd like to comment and chat, join the Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group, I'll leave a link to that as well. If you prefer books to fashion, or you like them both, why not join the Dean Street Press Facebook group? I will leave links to everything as I say, and I'll be back very soon with more on the Ultimate Fashion History, including a new episode of UFH Noir our true crime series. Where do I get off? Um, that I'm currently investigating and it's quite eerie and chilly, so I'm excited to share that with you. Until then, take care and enjoy the change of the season. I always do. Bye for now.